So now we've looked at dimensional tolerancing and hybrid tolerancing, or band-aid tolerancing as I also called it, and we've looked at some of the shortcomings of these two tolerancing methods. So now let's look at systematic GPS tolerancing and how that works and how that is different from those other two methodologies. Here I've first shown two pictures of the shaft I've been talking about, and in this case I have highlighted the functional features of the shaft in color, and that would be our first step to, to identify what are really the functional features of our component so we can focus our tolerancing efforts on that. And there are several functional features here, but we will focus on the two bearing surfaces that I've highlighted in red and the two end faces that are highlighted in light blue that we've also looked at when we looked at dimensional and hybrid tolerancing. The first thing we do, as we did in the hybrid torrensing, is to make sure that the two bearing surfaces are aligned with each other. But where in the hybrid torrensing we, we said, well, we use one of them as a datum and then we align the other one to, to that one. Here we say, well, the two surfaces, they are the same diameter and they're equally wide, so they share the responsibility to align the shaft in the design, and so they really need to be equal also in, in defining the primary datum that we have. And so we express this by making both of them datums, so each of them is identified as a datum, and then we tolerance them back to what we call a common datum between the two datums that we identified. So we're really tolerancing the median line lines of the two bearing surfaces back to a datum that's defined from the two together. And so that looks like this when we look at it in our usual 3D representation. We have the two bearing surfaces that we identified as datums. So this is datum feature R and this is datum feature F. And from the two, we create an axis that is common from the two. So this is a, what we call a common datum between the two. And then we have a torrent zone for the median line for each of the two bearing surfaces that is aligned with that common datum. And so this way we make sure that the two bearing surfaces or the median lines of the two bearing surfaces are aligned with each other. But in this case it's not that one aligns the other, it is the two that co-align each other and they are equal instead of one being the datum and the other the tolerance feature. Here they function both as datum and as tolerance feature, both of them equally. The next thing we do in our systematic tolerancing is that we say we determine that the backside of the hub here is going to be the, the secondary datum in our shaft because while the two bearing surfaces define the, the main direction of the shaft when it's mounted in the design. The backside of the hub here is what determines the actual position back and forth when we mount the shaft, because this is what is going to stop how far it's going to be pulled against the housing surface. So we indicate that this is also going to be a datum, and we have a tolerance that says it has to be perpendicular to the common datum between the front bearing and the rear bearing, and it has to be perpendicular within 0 0.1 millimeters. And so if we look at what the meaning of this tolerance is, it looks like this, and it's similar to what we saw when we did the perpendicularity tolerance in our hybrid tolerancing. Only here, the axis that is the datum that our tolerance feature is perpendicular to is now defined from both the bearing surfaces, not just one of them. But still, the tolerance defines two parallel planes. They are separated by 0 0.1 millimeters, which is the tolerance value. They are perpendicular to this axis that is now defined from the two bearing surfaces. It's allowed to move back and forth, but it has to remain perpendicular. And this tolerance surface, the back side of the hub, has to remain between these two parallel planes. They can move back and forth because in the end, it becomes this surface that determines where the zero point, if you will, for the back and forth movement along the shaft resides in the workpiece. So in, the, in this sense, this is not very different from what we saw in the hybrid tolerancing, except that we've used a more functionally correct datum system for this tolerance.